All right, let's <clears throat> take a look at some series and give you some practice. Uh, what I would like you to do is try each of these on your own and then unpause it and work through it with me. So I'm given this, I can tell automatically it's geometric, but notice it's not in the right form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out our first few terms minus a third plus a ninth, okay? Uh, minus 127th and we keep going okay <clears throat> I'm going to factor out negative a third so this will be one oops you know what that's one minus a third plus a 27th minus okay and I'm going to do this to the K so I'm going to rewrite this as a series from k equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 third to the minus 1 third to the k. <clears throat> now it's in the right form. The first term is minus a third, 1 minus common ratio, 1 third, don't forget the negative like I did, over 4 thirds. The thirds simplify out, this sums to negative a fourth. <clears throat> All right. Um, ooh. You know what? I think I'll save that as a surprise for my young adults. Uh, let's take a look at this geometric series. Oh, I'm going to go from 1 to infinity. Now, <clears throat> what I want you to do is partial fraction decomposition and show that you can write it like this. Excuse <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, 2k minus 1, uh, minus 1 over 2k plus 1. k equals 1 to infinity. I'm just going to now take a look at this series. Okay. Okay. The first partial sum. Okay. Uh, 2 minus 1 is, so this is 1 minus a third. And I'm not going to simplify that. S sub 2. 1 ooh, minus a third plus, okay. Uh, one third minus one fifth. Bing, bing. S sub three. So I get S sub two. One minus a fifth. Now I'm going to add the third term on here. Six minus one is five. Minus a seventh. Okay, I'm beginning to see a pattern in the partial sums. What I think is going to happen is I'm going to end up with 1 minus a ninth. So let's see. 8 minus 1 is a seventh. Well, it's going to be a seventh. Uh, 8 plus 1. Okay. So my nth partial sums formula is 1 minus, and it's this term, 1 over 2n plus 1. As n goes to infinity, s sub n goes to 1. Therefore, this series converges to 1. However, this series up here, if this converges to 1, don't forget to multiply it by a half, that converges to 1 half. Hmm. <clears throat> well, let me think about this. Is this 1 over 2 squared times 2 to the 1 half plus 1 over 3 squared times 3 to the 1 half 
plus 1 over 4 squared times 4 to the 1 half. Now this is 1 over 1 squared times 1 to the 1 half. So this is 1 over n to the 2.5. n goes from 1 to infinity. This is a convergent p-series. Because my power is 2 and a half, which is bigger than 1. <clears throat> that one wasn't so bad. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Interest. Oh, there's some that's some nice problems. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to do this one a couple different ways. The first one is I'm going to let f of x be 1 over 4x squared plus 1. Okay. Clearly, f of k is a sub k because that's 1 over 4k squared plus 1 for all k bigger than or equal to 1. Okay. <coughs> Clearly, f of x is positive for all x greater than 0. Okay, f of x is a rational function. It's continuous. Now notice, I'm just going to go from 1 to infinity. Is f decreasing? Well, hmm, f prime of x will be minus 1 over 4x squared plus 1 to the minus 2, which is over 2, times 8x. Clearly, f prime of x is negative for all x bigger than or equal to 1. So f is a decreasing function. I think you're going to like the second way I'm going to do this. <laughs> well, actually, no, I think this was the way I want to. Actually, no, there's another way to do this one. Okay. So, I'm going to look at the integral. Okay. Which is, I believe that's 2x. Don't forget to square it. If u is 2x, du is 2dx. So this is arctangent 2x plus constant. OK. That's the limit. As b goes to infinity from 1 to b of dx over, however, oh, you know what, Mr. Isaac forgot the 1 half and nobody said anything. 1 half the limit as b tends to infinity of the arc tangent of 2x evaluated from 1 to b. 1 half. The limit as b tends to infinity, the arc tangent of 2x minus, and 2 times 1, I hope, is still 2. Whatever angle that is, it's not 1 on the unit circle. <laughs> if you think about going to positive infinity, that means the angle is approaching pi over 2. That means, because if you think about it, it's 
like this, right? And when you're doubling that to get to pi over 2, <laughs> so this is going to be pi over 2. So I have 1 half pi over 2 minus, and this is an exact angle. Don't know what it is, but there it is. And then when I distribute this, this is pi over 4 minus, and don't forget arctangent of 2. And I forgot when I did this to divide that by 2. So it happens to all of us. So what does this mean? So the improper integral converges. Um, so I write that. Therefore, by the integral test, the improper integral from 1, wait, not 1, we, did, we started, let me double check, yeah it is 1, 1 to infinity of 1 over 4x squared plus 1 in x, and the infinite sequence from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 4k squared plus 1 converge together. Okay. Now, that was a lot of work. <laughs> Is there another way I could have done this? Okay, I believe so. Um, let's look at the series 1 over k squared. A convergent p series. Why? Because p is 2, which is bigger than 1. So I'm going to form the sequence, OK? Uh, that numerator was 4, right? I want to make sure I copied down the wrong problem. No, it was, it was 1 over 4k squared plus 9 over 1 over k squared. Cleaning the algebra up, this is k squared over 4k squared plus 9. Now I'm going to just do algebra, because I don't want to use L'Hopital's rule. 4 plus 9 over k squared, which is 1 over 4 plus 9 over k squared. So the limit as k goes to infinity of these is the limit as k goes to infinity of this fraction that we just did. We should be able to remember that that's a fourth which isn't 0, and it's positive. Therefore, by the limit comparison test, both the series, I keep wanting to put the 4 in the numerator, and I don't know why, for the love of Newton, I'm doing that. I think I copied that. Was it? You know what? I copied. Well, you know what? I just compared it to a different series. But I could have done this last example instead of using the integral test. I could have compared the sequence or the series 1 over 4k squared plus 1 to this 1 over k squared series, which is a convergent p series. I'd still come up with the same limit, and therefore it converges. So as you can see, there are different ways to do these problems. Um, and you got to be careful. Look, on that previous, oops, on the previous example right here, when I was playing with this, I multiplied right over here. I already knew I was going to pi over 4, but I did it too soon. And that would have messed up my example, because then I would have made that pi over 8. So it's easy to make these kind of silly mistakes. So you just need to be cautious and careful. Uh, where is that? Wait a minute. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. 15 minutes.